everybody. My name is Katie Vasena, and today I'm going to present Does Quarantine Grow Muscle on behalf of the USF Muscle Lab. We're really excited to give this presentation, talk a little bit about what we've been doing, how quarantine has affected our ability to conduct research, and how we're continuing to make muscles grow. Um, we have lots of questions to answer this year. We're interested in growing calf muscles. We have a new device called the New Fit. Um, we're interested in tennis injuries. We're going to be doing some case series and we're writing some other papers like the ones on echo intensity. Um, the first thing we had to do was adjust to the fall of 2020. Things are so different and we weren't even sure if we were going to be able to be in the lab. So first thing we came up with was a survey-based study examining injuries that have occurred in tennis. USF Muscle Lab is interested in what injuries are occurring in tennis players and what strength and conditioning practices accompany their tennis workouts. Um, we're running a survey-based study that is sent out to all Division One, Two, Three men's and women's tennis teams across the country. And we're trying to determine what injuries the athletes are experiencing and what strength and conditioning practices they're employing in a weight room. We're going to run our analysis and see if there is any relationship between specific sizes, specific practices, and injuries that are occurring amongst the team. We currently have 72 responses to our survey from the coaches. One response represents about 10 tennis players on the team. So we currently have the data from over 720 ten tennis players. And really the interest of this study is whether we can improve practices. So are the things that teams are doing very effective or are the things that they perhaps are wasting time on? Um, we wanna see the areas that we could take advantage of and improve what they're doing in the weight room to complement the sport of tennis. And ultimately I hope this helps to lead into my PhD where I hope to do my research. As a former USF tennis player, I want to continue to study tennis and learn more about practices in tennis and how it can become better. And the USF Muscle Lab has given me the opportunity to do that. We're also doing a blood flow restriction study. We are actually putting the cuff on the upper part of the leg and we're limiting the blood flow to the muscle and training cuffs this semester. So if you're in quarantine and don't have access to the heavy weight, B, uh, BFR is actually a very useful tool and a way to go. So what is it? We take a blood pressure in your leg, in this case, and inflate the cuff below the pressure it takes to cut off blood flow to your leg, restricting the blood. When we restrict the blood flow, it causes your muscles to fatigue very quickly. So just doing cuff against the wall, like the example in the picture, can induce growth. This study has been really cool, and we're looking at growth over time. It's a lot of training. Individuals are doing four sets in the machine, and they're also doing four sets against the wall. And it's been really intense. And blood flow restriction seems like it's a very sophisticated technique, and it's also really growing in practice. Dr. Buckner used BFR during quarantine when he didn't have access to heavy weights, and he claims that he was able to maintain some of his muscle mass. It's interesting because this protocol has led to some crazy soreness. So we've been adjusting and learning as we move um, through the study. Um, we're measuring size of the muscle using the B-mode ultrasound. Um, so you can see um, Rio here, um, he's imaging the cuff muscle and looking at it on the screen. Basically, we will capture images at the beginning of the study and we will do an analysis at the end of the study and see how much growth we were able to achieve during a six week period. Um, and here, you're gonna see a closer view of what it looks like. On the right, you can see the ultrasound probe. And on the left, you can see the image of the calf muscle. The bold line at the bottom of the image is the bone. And at the very top, the thin layer is actually the fat. And underneath that and everything in between is skeletal muscle. And what we might expect to see is a small change over time. We're also looking at something called the echo intensity. If you look at the right, you notice that the picture is black and white. Right now I'm working on a manuscript and echo intensity to better understand the literature. It's a technique with ultrasound that is supposed to tell us what the quality of the muscle is. And we're working on trying to better understand this measurement. And if you look at this picture, you see white, black, different shades of gray. And we actually think that this measurement may not be useful at all in physiology. And we have a research line dedicated to echo intensity. We're trying to um, further develop this thinking. 
Another thing we're doing in the lab this semester is a new fit stimulation study. New fit is a device when you don't have access to gym or weights, it can be really useful. You can see Dr. Buckner here lifting a foam dumbbell and he has an electrode on either side of his arm. Those electrodes are sending stimulus to his brain to maximally activate his muscle. Um, currently in the lab, we're doing an acute study. So we're working at the fatigue, we're looking at the fatigue response. We're measuring strength before and after. We're measuring muscle swelling before and after and soreness in days following exercise in the new fit machine. It's a very exciting study and this device is becoming really popular. We're also interested, does it cause muscle damage? So you're not lifting any weights, but you get very, very sore from having this device hooked up to your muscles. It has important implications clinical populations. For example, people physically lift weights, but our lab is interested in it from a muscle growth perspective. What can we learn about NuFit? And our lab has got some upgrades in the past year. We're so excited about it. On the right, you can see the new Cybex machine that was made possible by the new researcher grant. And on the left, you can see a new leg extension machine that we were able to get through external funding through NuFit. We're so thankful for this new additions. And of course, the USF Muscle Lab is a team and we work together to better understand things. I want to recognize our team, Blake, Rio, and Adam, and of course, Dr. Buckner, who sacrificed his presence in this photo by deciding to be a camera person. All right, that was awesome. You. What a what a wonderful presentation and you set the bar high for your <laughs> for your peers. Here. Um, thank you, thank so, you much. so much. And you said you I've not met a Katarina before. You say you go by Katie or Yeah, Katie is just like a nickname, it's kind of a short name. Yekaterina is a Russian name, but nobody ever uses it. You know, even in Russian it's Kata. So Well, Katie, you did a great job. So thank you so I'll much for, for Katie for sure. <laughs> Turn my camera back on. Um, I was I was clapping for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank I you. Heard that. Thank you so much. So at this point now we take about a three minute break and there's an opportunity for anyone to ask Katie or or Sam Buckner any questions you have about their presentation. So use your raise hand mode, please. Go ahead, Oscar. Just a, a very brief question. Do you have any age range where you are focusing for this study? Like other people like me would have some <laughs> of those results. We're currently just focusing on the age range from 18 to 35, but we might extend it just for you. So. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Other questions or comments? <clears throat> Dana, I see your hand raised. Yeah, that was really an interesting presentation. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I'm curious to know if you, in, by this method, can you increase uh, bulk and size in a way that's comparable to lifting heavy weights? You mean the blood flow restriction or the new fit device? Uh, the blood flow restriction in particular. Well, um, the way it works, so basically when you lift heavy weights, you activate your, your muscle fibers, right? And you activate them all basically at once. Um, with um, blood flow restriction, you do have similar activation. It just takes, um, so for example, if you were lifting light weight, it would just take, take a little bit longer to activate, you know, all of the motor units and muscle fibers. Blood flow restriction just kind of, cuts the time so like if you don't feel like you know lifting heavy weights and you don't really have that much time you put blood flow restriction and you're still going to fatigue the muscle and you most likely are going to see similar growth that's what we're kind of trying to see right now with a cuff study because basically one leg is doing traditional you know high well kind of medium high load lifting and the other one is doing really light load with bfr and we're thinking that growth is going to be the same just a quick follow up. I know someone else has a question. Uh, does it make any sense to use that method and lift heavy weights at the same time? Actually, uh, we were talking about it, and I think Dr. Buckner can really add on that because he focused on that. But 
we don't think it's going to be necessary. I mean, you will experience a lot of discomfort because it, it's pretty difficult to cut off the blood flow, right? And lift weights. Um, so we think the growth is still gonna be the same. So we don't think high load and blood flow restriction is going to have you know any benefits on top of lower load and blood flow, except for giving you more discomfort. Interesting, thank you. Thank you.